All right, guys, uh, we're back again, KDM Tuners. Uh, we uh, decided to do an engine priming video for you guys. Um, today, we're gonna get into the whole engine priming. So if you get a new engine, uh, a lot of work done on an engine, even if you put a new turbo on your car, these steps will probably be beneficial to you. Um, the, the most important thing I'm gonna say right off the bat is you do not wanna start an engine with any of these new components in it and just fire it up without priming the engine. And what is engine priming? Okay, engine priming would be, you need, so it, we have an oil pump in, in the engine, obviously. Uh, when we pull these things apart, the oil pump is dry. So we need to get oil back into the oil pump for one. For two, we need the oil to be circulating throughout the whole system before we add heat to it. Um, the only way to add heat to it is by starting it, you get your spark, your combustion, and you have heat. So what we wanna do is we wanna cycle the whole system with the oil first and then we'll end up repriming the fuel pump to get the fuel and the lines ready to fire before you push that start button for the first time. So with that said, let's just get into it and get started on this thing. First things first is you're gonna pull the fuse uh, for the fuel pump. Um, the fuel pump fuse is located in the fuel, uh, fuse box in the front of the car. So go ahead and pull the, the cover off of the fuse box and you're gonna locate the fuel pump uh, relay basically it's called so it's going to be the third one from the left at the very top row so you can either wiggle those out with your fingers or use needle nose pliers go ahead and pop that out next thing we're going to go and hop over to the injector uh, harness uh, for most of you guys your injector harness is going to be right at the top of the manifold on this particular car we've rewired the car and it now is underneath by the throttle body so we'll disconnect that Next up would be remove the clip off the high pressure fuel pump. Um, this is redundant, but I'd rather be redundant than having a chance of this sucker firing or pumping fuel into the engine without spark. Because if you get enough fuel in an engine without spark and you go to crank that thing up, fuel, uh, you get uh, basically the engine will lock up. So you don't want to do that. So also known as hydro locking. Um, next step would be to remove the coil packs and spark plugs. This is very simple, and the reason why we do this is not because we don't want the spark in there, which doesn't help if we do, but we want the engine to be able to cycle smoothly without any compression in the engine. So this will help your, maintain your, your starter. Um, in doing this process, the starter gets a workout. So we take the spark plugs out and reduce the compression. It helps the, the engine spin quicker. Uh, the next step would be just go ahead and prime the engine. In order to prime the engine, what I like to do is get in the car and you're gonna press the start button. You're gonna, just like you're gonna start the car. You're gonna let the car cycle itself. It's gonna want, it's, it actually is not even gonna sound like it's starting. It's just gonna sound like a, a whining, like a That's it. So you're gonna let that cycle all the way through the start cycle and it'll stop on its own. After it stops on its own, you're gonna restart the cycle again. I like to do this two to three times just to make sure the oil pressure is in the car. Um, after doing a couple of these, I've noticed that two cycles on this is about what it takes to get oil throughout the whole engine of the car on a completely dry engine. So do it again. I'm going to press the start button, let it cycle. I'm going to get that sound. Whee! Just let it go until it stops. After that, your engine is primed. You've got your oil all over the engine and where it needs to be. Next step would be reinstall everything you just uninstalled because we're gonna get ready to fire this sucker. So go back and install your, your spark plugs, your coil packs, and your injectors, your high pressure fuel pump switch, your fuse. And then once you get all that back in there, go ahead and hop back in the car. Now we're gonna prime the fuel pump. In order to prime the fuel pump, it's very simple. You're gonna actually use your auxiliary mode for this. So you're not gonna start the car again. So what you're gonna do with your foot on the brake, off the clutch, or if it's automatic, just on the brake, you're gonna press the auxiliary button twice. So you're gonna pop it twice, boom, boom, twice. And then you're gonna hear everything light up. All the lights are gonna come on. You're gonna hear the whine. Listen for the whine of the fuel pump. You'll hear it like hum, like almost a whining hum. 
and then you'll hear two or three clicks after that. Once those two or three clicks happen, go ahead and shut the car off, press the button once, and then you're gonna do it again, one more time. So press the button twice, boom, boom, let everything light up again, you'll hear the whine of the fuel pump, you're gonna hear the click. So once the clicks are done, the two or three clicks, go ahead and shut it off. At this point, you have your oils primed, your fuel pumps primed, everything should be ready to start. So the next thing is just to let it rip. So at, start it as usual, you know, put your brake on, press the start button, hear your manual, push the clutch in, start button, and it fire right away. And that's how you uh, prime an engine when it's brand new. Now if it's a turbo, you do the same thing. Um, I like to do that just to get make sure oil pressure is everywhere. If you start a car with a dry turbo, you'll burn that sucker up almost on startup. So make sure you prime that as well. Oh yes. Okay, after you have everything running, the car is idling, you're gonna have, um, once the RPM comes down, down to its resting spot, uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go take a look around the car in the engine bay. Um, if it's smoking a little bit, don't mind that yet. Uh, what you want to do is check the, for any leaks or anything that sounds funny, any weird knocking, any, any, anything that sounds out of place, um, you're going to want to check that out. Um, if all looks good, which it probably will, um, you're gonna, the next step would be to go ahead and bring the RPM, get back in the car, bring the RPM up to about 2,000 to 2,500 RPM. Um, we're going to leave it here at this RPM, which means you probably have to sit in the car for 20 minutes. Uh, and what we're doing right here is two things. One, we're breaking in the piston rings. Um, so when you hear engine break in, this is pretty much the engine break in. Uh, there's not a lot to it. So you're going to bring it up to 2500 RPM, hold it for 20 minutes, and that will set the rings in, in the brand new uh, bores. So everything will be perfect there. Uh, second thing is when you are doing this, you're going to burn off all the stuff that you got all over the engine. So you have a lot of like oils and, and stuff that got outside of the engine when you're putting it together. Uh, there's a lot of like, if you're using new manifolds and all this stuff, there's going to be just stuff that burns off. Um, this will probably smoke heavily for about 20 minutes the whole time. Um, I suggest doing this outdoors because if you're inside of a garage or anything like that, uh, you're going to smoke yourself out. So that's the next critical step in this whole new engine process. Um, with turbos, new turbos, you can skip that process. Next step, uh, after the 20 minutes is up, what we're gonna want you to do is turn the car off completely. You're gonna drain the oil and pull the, uh, the oil filter off the car. Um, the reason why, we, a lot of people skip this step, the reason why we promote this is, first of all, we have all, any contaminants that could have gotten the engine while it was being built. You can have the cleanest engine room in the world, you're still gonna get some kind of contaminants in there, whether it's dust or whatever it is. If someone has a beard, they drop a hair in there, who knows? You want all that stuff out of there. You want it out of there right away. So go ahead and get rid of that oil. It's gonna get all, you know, the break-in fluids, um, your assembly lubes, all that stuff out. What you really wanna do is when you pull that filter, you wanna get a filter cutter, cut it open and look for any major particulates, any kind of metal, um, anything that doesn't belong there. Um, I like to do this just to make sure the engine's good at this point. Um, and then from that point, what we're gonna do is put a new, new filter on there and new break-in oil. So we're still not using our synthetic oil at this point. We're still using a mineral-based uh, break-in oil for, again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat cycle the engine two to three more times with the break-in oil. And in doing this, it's very simple. What we want you to do is let the car cool all the way down from the last oil change. Once the car is completely cooled down, you're going to start the car up. Let it warm up to operating temperature. And when I say operating temperature, I don't mean the coolant temperature is operating is, is at its normal line. You want the oil temp to get to operating temperature, um, at least until you rip on it. Uh, but in this case, we're just going for heat cycle. So let it just warm up as much as you can, maybe five, 10 minutes. Once the car is warmed up, go drive it around. Two key things though. We want you to drive it around for a lot of stop and go and nothing, nothing over 4,000 RPM at 40% throttle. So we're not putting a lot of load on the engine. We're just getting the heat and we're getting everything working RPM wise at different RPMs to make sure everything is breaking in properly. This will break in every part of the engine as it is. So after you drive maybe 10, 15 minutes doing that, come back home, turn the car off, let it cool down all the way 
completely and either the next day or a couple hours later whenever the car is completely cool you're going to go ahead and do that again start the car go drive around same thing you're going to do that two or three times after the two or three times are up um, you're going to watch the oil consumption on your dipstick as you're doing this you're going to see the oil consumption start to, to it's going to drop from the beginning you're going to see it lower lower at some point it's going to stop and it's just going to stay there once that oil consumption stops and stays at a certain point the engine's broken that's it it's done. You can take it to the dyno, take it to the racetrack, do whatever you want. The car's done. Typically, this is done pretty early. Um, maybe three heat cycles is even overkill, but you know that's what we like to do here. So the whole theory about 500 to 1,000 miles, don't worry about it. It's heat cycles. So um, after that, you know, go ahead and change your oil. Put whatever oil it is you like to put in the car and have fun with it. Take it to your you know, tuner, the track, whatever you want to do. Uh, oil recommendations, we like to use a lot of Motul stuff over here. Um, so if you're racing it, it's a race car, we'll use a Motul 300V. On, a, on this car in particular, the 1.6 Gamma Motors um, for the turbo, we like to use a five, uh, 540. Um, you can use a 530, it's just the 540 seems to work the best. So uh, if you're a street driven car, we like the Motul 8100XS. 81, uh, um, that's the one we recommend, uh, but there's other oils that are great as well, like Amsoil makes a good oil, their racing signature, um, or something like Driven. Uh, Driven oil, which I believe used to be the old Joe Gibbs oils, are rebranded to Driven. So um, if you guys have any questions at all about this process or your, something I've said is confusing or even controversial, because I know it is, uh, you can leave us a comment. We can start a discussion. We can talk about it. Um, if you like the video though, give us a thumbs up, you know, give, like, our, like and subscribe to our videos. Um, and yeah, that's it. Hit us up on all our social media and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.